Hello, hello uh, and welcome everybody. Um, it's great to see so many of you joining us. Uh, my name is Matt Lingard and I'm chairing today's session. Um, and there's the name of the session on the screen and you can see the speakers. So hopefully you're in the right place. Um, it's great to see so many people joining and also a shout out to those of you watching at some distant point in the future. Um, and we hope you enjoy it too. Um, I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm just going to hand straight over to our two speakers, um, Kelly and Louise, to get us underway. Um, and just a reminder on the questions, if you post them in the chat during the, during the talk at any point, I'll be keeping an eye out for them and then we'll pass them on um, towards the end of the presentation. So there's 20 minutes to present and five minutes to question for questions. So over to you, Louise. Brilliant. I'll let actually Kelly introduce the, the title of the research because it is her research. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelly Hester. I'm a master's research student at IT Sligo. And the title of my research is Online Supports for Flexible Learners to Support Student Mental Health and Wellbeing at Scale. Now, firstly, I'm Louise Cairns, and I'm going to take you through um, a bit of the background of the project. So I'm the, the IT Sligo project manager on the INO project, and INO stands for Innovation Opportunities Transforming Education. So the Higher Education Authority in Ireland awarded 2.8 million to support this project. And we were charged with building digital capability for flexible learning delivery in the West to the Northwest of Ireland. iNote is a multi-institutional higher education partnership project, and it's comprised of the Institute of Technology Sligo, Letterkenny Institute of Technology, and Galway Mayo Institute of Technology. The three higher education institutes are located, as you can see, from the West to Northwest of Ireland. As a group, the three HEIs are the Connacht Ulster Alliance. Currently, we're working towards the creation of a technological university in the west to northwest of Ireland, and hopefully this will be achieved by January 22. At that stage, then, we will have eight campuses, over 20,000 students even, and 600 programmes. There's five work packages on this project, and IT Sligo is leading work package three. So we're focusing on building a range of student services for flexible learning. As you have seen previously, our campuses cover a wide area and sometimes our students live in remote areas. Furthermore, many of our students study online courses and we have international students working in different time zones studying at different times. So we looked at focusing on creating and refining tools from an inclusive viewpoint, tools that will support our students and then they would be available to our online students and then they'll be available also to our campus students. We've built an interactive framework to support the student journey and this framework is split into three stages before they arrive, while they're studying and when they move on. Each stage has key themes in it and students can find their support for the team by clicking on the interactive framework for quick access. So the framework will help students to identify and to find their supports quickly themselves, 24 seven, all round year, year round and outside office hours. So this research that Kelly's going to introduce fits into the wellbeing section in stage two of while you study. Over you to Kelly. Okay, to begin with, I thought it would be helpful to provide some definition around mental health and wellbeing. Mental health is defined as being able to cope with the normal pressures and disappointments that life brings, having a sense of worth and fulfillment while being affiliated to and contributing to society or the community. Wellbeing, the definition of wellbeing as defined by Dodge et al. 2012 is built upon a strand that wellbeing is a balancing act or a flow between each human encounter and overcome, so to, yeah, within each human to encounter and overcome difficulties. So just like a seesaw, it's a balancing point between students' psychological, social, and physical resources and their psychological, so social, and physical challenges that they face in higher education. Meaning that if a students have more challenges than reserves, the seesaw dips along with their well-being and vice versa. Mental health as defined by Barden and Caleb 2019 and Thompson 2019. So symptoms of mental health can occur at any time for a student. It can range from depression, anxiety, panic attacks, trouble sleeping, and so on. So transition, stress, burnout, money worries, 
Loneliness, disappointments can lead to symptoms of mental health distresses. Even the mildest symptom can impact a student's university experience and can influence successful study. Mental illness and ill health. So these are conditions beyond the normal up and down of everyday life. And these are influenced by such things as genetic, cognitive, emotional, socioeconomic and spiritual factors. Reports show that college students are struggling with mental health and well-being, impacting their college experience, ability, sense of self and academic success. The National Student Mental Health Survey, one of the biggest of its kind, um, conducted in 2018 and 19, provides an overview and highlights concerns around the mental health and well-being of 3,300 students in higher education. It reported that 32.2% of students were diagnosed with mental health distresses over their lifespan, 74% with depression and anxiety, 34% with eating disorders, and 7.2% with obsessive compulsive disorders. 20% of students reported that they felt like they had no one to talk to regarding their distresses, and students relying on loans, 52% were highly anxious, 36.5% highly depressed and 25.5% highly stressed. An underlining theme was that the students' sense and feelings of helplessness in asking for and receiving the supports they need. Students felt there was a shortage of support available when they were trying to seek help. So more recently, Lister, Seal and Dooch from the Open University presented comprehensive statistics from a survey of 580 for students regarding enablers and barriers to well-being in distant learning. The report shows that 33.35% found isolation negatively impacted their mental health. 60.1% of students struggled with difficult life circumstances during the studies and 406 reporting those with mental health conditions also struggled with their communication skills and 71.9% of students reporting a mental health condition found assessments were a problem for their mental well-being. But also providing a more balanced view, they, they found how um, higher education and distant learning actually promoted well-being. And we see that 58.2% of students said that studying assisted with their sense of confidence and identity. 62.1% of students communicates that their curriculum actually proved positive for their well-being. 63.7% stated that building study skills benefited their mental health and well-being. And 58.4% of students revealed that distant learning environment proved good for their mental health. So while statistics show that higher education students are struggling, there still remains many barriers for students seeking help. So these include embarrassment and the stigma, discrimination and exclusion that can often arise as a result of disclosing mental distresses. Students can perceive that stress and anxiety is actually part and parcel of college life. Many do not have the mental literacy to identify their need for psychological assistance. And then there's the inconvenience, time, schedule and costs, um, schedule issues and costs. As a result, there are now greater efforts regarding supports and interventions to assist and improve with mental health and well-being among higher education students. So with evidence that early intervention reduces psychological distresses and to support student mental health and well-being via the I Know project, IT Sligo are implementing two digital online mental health and well-being intervention programs. The first is Epigeums, Being Well, Living Well, and the second is Silver Clouds Wellbeing in Education. So digital mental health and wellbeing inter interventions. So these are distributed on modes such as internet web pages, on mobile device applications, and they provide an accessible and convenient way for higher education students to seek and avail of mental health support. Intervention occurs as students through their Mo Moodle page access practical wellbeing tips, support tools, and online counseling by engaging with the applications. And this is to suit their timetable to meet their individual needs. So in contrast to a student struggling alone, the two platforms, Epigeums Being Well, Living Well, and Silver Cloud Health offer a supportive environment to students. 
The first digital intervention is Being Well, Living Well, and this is a new online toolkit produced in partnership with mental health authorities, higher education students and staff, and it used a preventative method to assist students along the way in their college journey in sustaining physical well-being. It addresses mental health and well-being topics unique to both undergraduate and postgraduate students in higher education. So with interactive and animated scenarios, it also directs students where to seek further help if needed. So the toolkit is presented within four strands with 17 micro courses. The first is Living Well. So this supports students in finding a sense of balance between their academic study life and healthy living. Feeling Well, and this explores and addresses emotional and mental challenges that students might face. Staying Safe provides a space to become more informed on issues around online safety. This includes healthy relationships, sexual health and consent. And Spending Well, this provides advice and presents cases around the topic of finances, including managing the cost of living and college fund, funding college. So the second um, is the second support is Silver Cloud Health Wellbeing in Education. This is an established confidential internet based digital mental health system that delivers online therapeutic and psychoeducation programs. It's established in conjunction with the School of Psychology at Trinity College, the University of Dublin. This provides eight weeks of internet delivered CBT treatment for common health issues such as depression, anxiety, and stress. It addresses students' thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. And the program consists of interactive and animated scenarios. And a key is that the students will independently use the tools after each session and then continue to use them in the future. So there are 17 civil cloud courses intended to help students improve and maintain their well-being by un addressing underlying issues that can have a negative impact on their college experience. And a few of these include space from depression, space from anxiety, space from stress, space from money worries, space for positive image, and so on. So the overall aims and objectives of this research is Firstly, to determine if and how students' mental health and well-being has improved as a direct result of using Being Well, Living Well and Silver Cloud. Number two is to examine if and how students believe there was an improvement in their college life and academic success. Three is to determine if the availability of this encouraged help-seeking behaviours within the students. And fourthly is to compare the experience of students who are learning online emergency remote blended and on campus. So the current research is assessing three cohorts of students, online students who will have access to psychological supports that are equivalent to those previously only accessible to on-campus students. And secondly, on-campus students, now remote learners. And then third, hopefully students who return to campus once COVID-19 restrictions have lifted comparing online with traditional on-campus students. And this research will conduct a comparison of the experiences of accessing and availing of the two online support programs, comparing students who were remote on-campus learners compared to students who are online learners. So this research will apply two theories. The first is the biopsychosocial model by Engel, 1977 to 19. 97, so it posits that an individual's well-being and thus behaviours are influenced by the interconnection of biological, social and emotional risk factors. So biological risk factors include genetic, medical, brain functioning. So physical illnesses would include fatigue, headaches, trouble sleeping and so on. Phys psychological factors include cognitive, emotional and behavioural features, while social factors include environmental, cultural, family characteristics unique to each student. So for example, research found there's um, linked emotional dynamics such as loneliness, a lack of confidence to causing physical distress and impacting a student's mental health. So a second theory is the self-determination theory by Decky and Ryan, 2000 to 2017. So this theory advocates that by having three innate psychological components meshed within biological, social, and cultural environments, so this produces proactive and engaged behavior. The three innate psychological components are 
competence, which is feeling capable and, and competent, autonomy, being self-sufficient and self-ruled, and relatedness, having a sense of belonging and connection. If the three psychological components are not fulfilled, it is said that student's motivation can be stifled and the student becomes passive and alienated. But this research raises questions such as, how does this theory fit in with higher education students availing of digital psychological interventions? For example, if and how does higher education environment produce proactive and engaged or passive and alienated behavior in students who are engaging with being well, living well and silver cloud? Here is the two year plan of data collection and analysis. The current research will study will be conducted using a mixed method approach. So conducting quantitative research through online survey, surveys and qualitative by form of individual semi-structured interviews. So for example, the methodology for quantitative as being well and living well offer different features and will be used by different individuals Four surveys were created. Students do the first baseline survey, so before they start being well, living well, or Silver Cloud program. So questions are on um, demographics and scales, measuring students' psychological and general well-being. Then having completed a program, students are presented with a second online survey that has an additional scale, measuring participants' satisfaction with being well, living well, and Silver Cloud. And just in conclusion, it is hoped that, that this research will inform an evidence-based approach to the adoption of digital mental health interventions for online students, while increasing help-seeking behaviours within the student population. Thanks very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, um, Kelly and Louise, for coming and, and sh sharing that with us. Um, it's obviously such a huge issue for, for the sector, um, as I think many of us um, are recognizing. Um, and it's, I think it's, it's so important that you're taking you know, research forward and, uh, and evaluating um, what the, the responses that you're trying to um, help the students through in the, way you, the ways you're trying to help the students through this. Um, I've got no questions in, in the chat yet, but there's still time for people um, to post them in. I wondered if I could just go back a little bit um, before the research. I was really interested in the two res resources you shared from Epigeum and um, from the name of the other one, Silver the Cloud. Cloud. Yeah. 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 And just your own evaluation of those resources, I was quite interested in, um, uh, you know, and yeah, just around those resources themselves. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Myself is a Jess. Yeah, so I'm just interested. Obviously, you haven't evaluated these with the students yet. Um, no, we're yeah, we're in, yeah. in the process of doing that. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So I was, yes. just, I was interested in, in your own kind of thoughts on the actual resources themselves. Um, yeah, I think I think they're extremely, and um, they're so beneficial. And I would have loved that even as when I was an undergrad student, just to have those resources. And just as it said as well, so many students don't realize that there might be some issues there. And by going into being well, silver, um, being well, living well, and silver cloud, you start to recognize maybe different issues that are there. And what, what's really good as well is that this is a place where professionals have come together and provide yeah. a safe platform to provide information to students across all the topics. Um, so, yeah. Great, thank you. Thank just you. Say there, Sorry, Louise. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Just going to add to it. Um, from I suppose a management point of view, when you're thinking of which one you might use, or will you use both? Uh, we kind of see being when well, living well fitting into an information part before they get into trouble. I suppose essentially, right. our silver cloud tends to be when the student is in trouble, you know, and, and they might be dealing with a counselor, or maybe they should be, you know, that that type of an area. So they complement each other. They just have different kind of purposes um, from, from that point of view as well. So it depends on, I suppose, what you're trying to do, whether you want to catch the intervention before it happens, so you're in information type of session, or, do you know, when the student is is in, in trouble itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, as well, I'm definitely going to be checking them out. We have got some questions I'd like to put forward. Uh, there's one from Peter 
beer on the on the screen now i'll let you read that one and if one of you could respond that'd be great yeah how might we reduce the stigma of mental health issues so students are willing to disclose and discuss yeah well this is coming through in my research actually that you know students it's a competitive environment and they strive for perfectionism and for students just to maybe it be more open, the college is more open or the university is more open that failure happens, disappointments happen, life doesn't all isn't always plain sailing. And just mean having a more open conversation around that. Um, I do know as well that some universities are actually bringing it into the curriculum so that the discussions can come up within in the lecture hall about maybe different things and they see that they're not alone in this and then stepping forward might be that bit easier but having platforms like this is definitely you know helpful so yeah and, and, and a whole kind of college perspective too we're trying to promote well-being and bring these yeah. tools into it um, but we're also trying to link up with student services and we have a graphics facilitator amongst our team who's planning to you know kind of visualize this each month so it different things within the tools that we might highlight at different stages so when they're going to exams that we might look at you know they're thinking about managing stress that type of thing so i suppose just taking um well-being from a, a college perspective from all the different services and not just concentrating on these particular tools so people just understand well-being is important for us all whether we're staff or students yeah i think that's so important louise those was things often don't happen in that way in the, the connections yeah. between departments and a kind of holistic approach, holistic approach to this. Um, uh, we've had a, just a comment from Eleanor before I move to Peter's second question, just, just flagging how, how interested people will be in terms of seeing, seeing the results of this and hopefully we'll be seeing you next year. Um, and uh, we'll just switch. Peter had put another question up, which is on the screen now. Is there any value in teachers being candid about their own issues and experiences? Um, I don't know if I can I can say outright if there is or isn't, but I do know that um, having a college campus maybe well-being and lots of information coming through um, will definitely support students and make them maybe think, okay, life, things don't happen or I didn't get the grades. Um, I know personally, I was, I remember a, one of my lecturers telling me that they hadn't got, initially hadn't got the grade they wanted and the relief I got from that, um, it really just boosted, you know, my morale to keep going yeah. and going, okay, if they, if that happened to them, you know, I can get over this as well. So I did find that helpful on a personal note, yes. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Kelly. Um, I think I think that was the last question um, in the comments. So I just want to say thank you um, to the both of you for taking the time, obviously, to uh, present today. Um, and as everybody's saying, it's such an important work and we will look forward to seeing the outcome. But for today, thank you for the, all the work you've put in in preparing. We appreciate that and know how much work um, that is. And thank you for everybody who came along to watch the session live today and those who are watching it at some point in the future. Um, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.